another Modern Musicking show. Today you're going to learn about a thing that happens at Carnegie Mellon University in the School of Music every Thursday. Oh, that's right. Hey, Mike, how you doing? You might we're doing an intro. Could you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. They moved my office up from the basement, so. Understood. Thank you. Uh, like I was saying, so convocation is a thing that happens on Thursdays. And each of the undergraduate students and sometimes the master's students meet in Kresge Theater and they get about a 50 minute uh, session on something. It could be uh, something to do with health or careers or it might be a performance by a faculty member or a uh, group of students. And so today the entire convocation is being given over to uh, the Modern Musicking Show. Sorry, went my foot caught. Um, so today you're going to hear from the group Power, a really awesome uh, group of four euphonium students. There's a deep dive with Sigma Alpha Iota, which is a sorority in the School of Music. Um, you're going to hear from Gino giving us a music history moment, and then I'm going to learn to play this really cool um, South American uh, panpipe thingamadingama. Oh, sorry. Uh, so we hope you enjoy it. Today on Jacob Random Holmes featuring Jacob Randall Holmes. Jacob, what if you found out that your car actually was a rocket car?
We need a third chair, right? Because, Manny, are you coming up as well? They said we can only do one with mics. So okay, I'll so that's enough. Right so Manny's going to stay put. Oh, no, 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 as you can tell, we kind of make it up as we go. And what this is about is trying to showcase, what we're trying to learn skills um, in terms of video production and how to communicate these ideas. And then we're also just sort of curious about what's it like to be on camera, what's it like to do an interview, what's it like to perform um, in an unexpected way. So are you ready? Yes. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, okay. okay. So the thing that would happen if you were watching it on, uh, on the video is this. Hi, today on our deep dive, we're going to hear about Sigma Alpha Iota. Can you tell me all these people? Excuse me. Can you tell all these nice people who you are? Uh, yes. Yeah, so Sigma Alpha Iota is a women's music fraternity here at Carnegie Mellon and also around the world. It's international. Um, we do a lot of service events. We do a lot of performance, performing, and um, yeah, it's really fun. And what's your name? <laughs> My name is Christina. And Christina, how long have you been involved with the organization? I've been with this organization since freshman year, so I'm a sen senior now, so four years. And why, did you, why were you interested in it? Um, we have a lot of cool alumni. Um, a lot of famous people, including uh, like Christian Chenoweth and um, Renee Fleming. So a lot of really cool people. Oh, hello. <laughs> yes, so um, also I really like the service things we do and it's just a really cool organization to be a part of. So you, you figured out that it, it, it was attractive to you because of the alums and then you realized that the service things were the really interesting part to you. Yes. yes. And so what are some examples of the service things that you do? Um, we've done seeing you thrift where we collect, collect um, like old clothes and we sell them and we give money to SAI philanthropies. What are SAI philanthropies? Um, certain philanthropies uh, include Bold Notes, this organization that makes music bigger for people with like eye problems. Oh. Um, we also have this place called Penn's Cottage, and it's a place for composers to stay and write music. Um, we have a lot of organizations which you can find on our website. Very cool. How big is how big is the group at Carnegie Mellon? It's about um, 20, 25, like 30 people. And what's your role? I am vice president of membership, so I um, I recruit people and teach them about our organization once they get um, once they get into our program. And so, a student shows up, let's say, as a freshman, they get here in late August, mm -hmm. and then when do you start approaching them about joining the organization? Unfortunately, you can't join until you have a grade here. Um, oh. You have to have a GPA, but so. Um, in the spring, you can join. So the fall is primarily about, at least for the new students, is about raising awareness yeah. for what the organization does. And, and what do you do in order to do that? Um, we have a lot of fun events. We had puppies and pancakes. Um, there were puppies in the, um, like by the fence. Mm -hmm. And we had pancakes and we got to pet the puppies. They were therapy puppies. And eat some pancakes and get to meet people. It was fun. I believe you. <laughs> And then, um, so the process in the spring, so now we have, we, we, we've spread the word, and we're mm -hmm. gonna try and get, how many would you, how many people would you hope to attract each year? We wanna get at least 10. At least that would 10. be great. It's usually harder in the fall, because not many people wanna join in the fall <laughs> for some reason. Well, and is it only, um, is it only School of Music students? No, it's really cool. You could be, um, you could be a music minor, or you could have just taken one music class, or you could be in an acapella group. Um, you just have to do like one school-related music thing. In your whole career. In your whole career. So if you take choir for one semester, then and then that's home. it, you could take it. Gotcha. And so then the process in the spring, or in the fall, whenever you're going to become a member, you express interest, hey, I want to do this thing, yes. and then what do I do? So you come to a recruitment event, and then if we like you, which we usually do. <laughs> we give you a bid, and um, you pledge, and you say, yes, I will be a part of this. We have a whole pledge 
wedding ceremony, and then you become a member in training where you learn about the sorority, the fraternity, and um, then you take a test of all the information about the fraternity, and if you pass, you can become initiated. I think I was calling it a sorority, I'm sorry. It's, oh, it's technically a fraternity. It's technically a fraternity, but it's all female identifying individuals, so. Gotcha, last question. What's the best part about being in? Um, just the community. For you, the community, I love my sisters, and getting to do all these fun things for the community. How many, I'm like, just, I lied, that's another question. How many campuses does this, uh, is this organization on? Um, is it international? It's or? international. So, ballpark. Any idea? Maddie. Maddie? <laughs> a lot. A lot. Yeah. So there's a lot of campuses. Fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. That's everything you need to know about Sigma Alpha Iota. Uh, get involved. thing called Lance Learns to Play, and in Lance Learns to Play, somebody teaches me to do a thing. And as I mentioned before, who we're trying to reach are high school musicians. And so last spring was the first season, and I learned uh, to play saxophone and bass. Uh, Hiroki and uh, uh, Ben, he's the one taught me saxophone. So this semester I'm learning uh, voice. Robbie Rosso is going to teach. I, I end up performing uh, Caro Mio Ben by the end of the semester, believe it or not. And, uh, so yeah, yeah, now you want to tune in for that for sure. And um, the oh, but today in, uh, we've got a very special uh, Lance Learns to play. This is Carlos Ortega coming onto the stage. How about a round of applause for Carlos? find out what it is that he's going to teach me. Have a seat, and then we'll start the segment the way we normally would. So it's basically just to kind of give a primer, a little overview of some basic concepts so that if you were a, uh, a middle school or a high school musician that was interested in learning a new instrument, it's some fundamentals about that. And so the intro looks like this. <laughs> Catchy, right? Okay, so today on Lance Learns to Play, we have a very special guest, and I'm going to learn to play a very cool thing. Your name is Carlos Ortega. I don't know if it is. And uh, you were a what here? Uh, what, what year are you in? I'm a freshman in music and technology. And you're from where? I am from Ecuador. Ecuador. And so you're going to teach me an Ecuadorian instrument? I am. What, what is that instrument? It's called... Uh, can I reveal yeah, it? Of course you may. Okay, this is a zamponia. It's, it's a type of pan, pan pipe. This is for you. Zamponia? Yes. It's also called a siku and has a number of names depending on what kind of what size it is. So the length of the pipes and the register. Um, all you need to know is Andean pan pipe. So this is from the uh, music of the Andes. So we got countries like Ecuador, Peru, um, Argentina, South America. So what, before we start playing it, so you became introduced to this instrument how? As a, I mean, as a kid, this, are these just like yeah. hanging out? And so if you were a beginning, like, would your family have given you one of these? Or did you pick it up in school? Or what, how did it come to be that you know how to do this? Well, you see, we always, so, Ecuador has a lot of very touristy cities, and there's a lot of artisan markets, and they're always selling these around. Um, there's a lot of people, like family members, who will have one of these. Sometimes they sell them in keychains. Um, these are more professional ones, they're tuned. But yeah, they're always kind of just laying around. And this is made of bamboo? Yeah, so some of them are made out of uh, wood, others different types of bamboo. And the differences are in the the ratio of the length of the tube to the thickness of to the, the thickness of the bore, and it'll give it a different tone, also depending on the on the material. So the diameter as well as the length uh, yes. will impact the, the tone. Yeah. Uh, the pitch and the tone. The, yeah, the pitch and the tone. Okay. And you started playing one of these what, what age? About a month and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still way younger than me. So, um, and is it is that typical? And you just sort of got interested in it? 
or how is it that you uh, came to start playing this thing? Well, it was actually because of this uh, because of the show. I got the email on the <laughs> hey, right on the. I didn't even pay him. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's, um, I got the email on the school of music on the school of music emailing list, and I actually had just bought that and. Um, I thought I found the perfect opportunity to share it and to learn it. So, and I just I like learning as many instruments as I can, and this one was a unique one. And now, is this an instrument that your family plays? Not really. There is one. There is one family member who specializes in our uh, folkloric music called pasillo, which means passage. And he, I'm sure he knows how to play one of these. And what are your goals for playing? Just to have fun, or are you going to? Yeah, to have fun, and well, to show it in the show. That's a very serious goal of mine. <laughs> and check. yes, check. And also to find out um, to get as much out of this instrument as possible, because these particular models aren't tuned chromatically. Mm. They don't have all of the notes, and so figuring out how to get all of those notes and being able to play as much music as I can is something I think very virtuous or virtuoso and something that I think is really cool. Well, you're here as a music and technology major. This is, I mean, this is a technology, but my sense is that you're dealing with programming computers and platforms and like, digital audio workstations and stuff like that. So what's the attraction to this analog instrument? I mean, what, how do you, does that, wh why are you interested in both? I think it's because I like rare things, and here in the United States, you don't really find these, and so it's cool to be able to bring something new to the table. Um, and so, with the music and technology background, I'm always thinking of how can I get this into a computer? How can I make a computer reproduce something like this? And so being able to play the instrument and getting to know the instrument really helps to be able to reproduce it. It's the bridge towards using it. Exactly. And so do you have a sense? I mean, have you played it enough that you you have a hunch on what how you might want to integrate this with technology? Yeah, I think I have a place to start. Would you tell us? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, as we all know, um, each sound is made up of different um, harmonics, so overtones, different fractions of the main frequency. And depending on how you play it, you can actually hear each individual overtone um, as they pile up and up. And so... Is that a thing you can demonstrate? Do you know how Yeah, to... it's... I have to play very softly. I don't know if we'll be able to hear it, but let's you see. Maybe do it in the mic a better chance. Hang on, let me get the actual note. It's very, very faint, but... It's there some some days. So let's well let's jump into the lesson. So what if I'm, I see I'm already I already would have failed because I would have thought that this was the way I was going to hold it. Yeah. So well, I'm already backwards. Um, just another little note about what you said in in traditional playing of this instrument, you would actually have two people playing uh, playing one you know one voice, but one person would play the upper the upper ridge and the other person would play the bottom ridge. So in that particular in that type of ensemble. Oh. But face to face? Um, I mean, literally this, you're going to play that one, I'm going to play this one, and we touch noses? No, 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 on, yeah. on separate, oh, okay. separate devices. All right, so you're going to play these, and I'm going to play these. All right. Well, in this you got to you be really, uh, very slow and basic, so you have no, I, I know nothing, so don't forget that. Yes. Well, in this case, uh, these are tuned to different keys. So I mean, it could be a dating thing, I guess. You could be sort of, no? Perhaps. Anyway, keep going, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in that ensemble, I don't know if you would play, I don't know like which direction the instrument would play. So it could be the case that I was playing it this it way, be, and it could yeah. be that I played that way. All right, and in general, I'm going to do what? You're going to play it with both ridges facing you, so the both high ridges facing, facing away. Okay, and on yours, you've written, I've got re fi la do mi sol. Yeah, so that one is tuned to the key of sol major. In Ecuador, we use the, we name notes by sol fa syllables, do re mi fa sol la ti. And we add sharps and flats as opposed to chromatic syllables. So on that one, there is a fa sharp. Uh, there's a little fa with a dot. Oh, I see. Uh huh. So we have there's the fa fa sharp, right? 
Yeah, and in this case, it's tuned to F or Fa major, but it doesn't have anything written on it. So uh, let's get started. All right. So to get the sound out, you put the the edge of a pipe mm -hmm. to the edge of your lip and sort of the bridge, the line between your chin and the pink part of your part of your lip. So. And that's by Rob or your fanny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to adjust the shape of your mouth so that you're blowing a stream of air just narrow enough for the hole. So the aperture of my pie hole has to be small enough that it's a focused <laughs> stream of air. Yeah, okay. and as you can see, each pipe has a different length. Hey! fortunate enough to get piano lessons at a young age. So, you know, by the time it was around 1922, he was already a good pianist, had his whole ensemble. They were playing as the Washingtonians, but they had to take it to New York City. So, 1923, he moves to New York City, beefs up the ensemble a little bit, and he starts playing in the Cotton Club. They're broadcasting him every night on the radio. The man is so famous after like four years, they have to take it on the road. The guy is doing world tours with this famous band, and he's with that band for 50 years. Some people come around too, like Billy Strayhorn becomes a composition friend of his, 
and some of the players that he had in the ensemble had become some of the best players in jazz known for their instrument. Uh, you're not going to get tired of his compositions. The guy wrote over a thousand different songs and he was a key part of the Harlem Renaissance. Very important man and I think it shows from his Medal of Freedom, his multiple Grammys, he's got a Pulitzer Prize. Uh, if you've listened to a jazz album, you've heard something from Duke. So keep an eye out for Duke Ellington and go ahead and find something you like because there's a million things. Thanks guys. <laughs> So um, the other most obvious way for you to get involved with the show on a, as a performance on, on this side of the camera is to be a part of the Student Showcase, which is how we close out each of the episodes. So the season that, uh, that aired last spring, each of the episodes ended with a, an individual student playing uh, a piece um, into the camera. This fall what we're doing is we're showcasing each of the large ensembles. So there's been um, a piece from the Wind Ensemble, the one that went up yesterday was the Philharmonic and Chorus. We're going to have the Exploded Ensemble. We're going to show, feature the, the big groups that are here. So while Power comes out to get set up, go ahead and do that. So um, I want to let you know that it can be the case that you can submit a part of a recital that you played on. Um, you'll, you'll, I'll explain how that happens. There'll be a, a web place that you can go uh, and you can submit a, a piece of uh, a performance that you were involved in. So if you had a piece that's five to seven minutes um, and it was recorded by recording services here, that's a really easy way for us to do it. If you want to sing or play a thing for us, reach out and let us know that so that we can find a, a filming for you to do so. Additionally, if you want to just submit a short video, and it could be uh, some version of what Gabe did, or it can be you talking about a piece and then playing a piece, or if you just want to do a cool, weird, funky video, and you would like to have it considered as part of the show, we want to know about that as well. So I think, are we, how are we doing? Everything good? You're ready to go? So this is power. I won't, we usually don't do an introduction for who the group is and what they're going to play, but what I will tell you is that they're going to play a piece called uh, Moon Dance, Dances? Dan this is Dances by a guy named John Stevens. It's the third movement of a piece called Dances, and I'm going to get out of the way. This is power, but before you play, we're going to do the little intro thing when the lights come back up, then, then you start.
So, at this point, we would probably show some outtakes, or we might do a tour of uh, one of the facilities. So the episode that went up yesterday, we did a, uh, um, Annie Shea was our deep dive, and then she gave us a little tour of the media lab. We're heading over to the Entertainment Technology Center on Monday to get um, some footage from there and talk to one of their uh, folks. And so I just sort of want to reiterate that this is a show by you, for you. And so if you're interested in being a part of it, we would love to have you as part of the team. And if you say, gosh, I don't have enough time to learn to um, uh, edit video and do all of this other stuff, that's okay. You can show up for one day and be a part of a music history moment or be a part of the um, student showcase. You can teach me to do a thing. We, I usually work with Megan. Uh, Grady to figure out what instruments I'll learn so that we can sort of spread the word in terms of recruiting. So um, if you're interested in being a part of it, we just need to know. And if you do want to do a deep dive and you want to be a part of the crew, we would love to have you. And so Yvonne, I want a round of applause for Yvonne. So, so Yvonne, crew that's hanging out backstage that are involved with every aspect of this part of it. So if you're interested in learning how to do this stuff, the easiest way is we just set up an independent study with me and then we work to get you the skills and experiences that you need to be able to check that box off. I firmly believe that while you're here, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you're just getting as part of your day. Um, and that's to get to work with fantastic teachers uh, on your individual instrument or, or composition uh, or in music tech and you get to play with lots of different ensembles and you get to play with chamber groups and you get to solo, but you live in a world now, you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, where technology is a big and bigger growing part of, of uh, how we interact with music. And so if you're interested in figuring out how to get your voice out into the world with technology, and I hope you are thinking about that, um, I hope that you are thinking about the notion, I was talking about this earlier, using your phone as a, a uh, using your phone rather than having your phone use you. You can use your phone to um, create a voice for yourself. If you're a composer, there's no reason you can't be posting music every day, every week, whatever. Uh, there's no reason as a performer you can't start putting up clips of yourself performing and or teaching. There's not any reason you can't, wouldn't, there's nothing preventing you from starting a YouTube channel, a podcast, a blog, a social media platform for you to get your voice out and find the audience that you're trying to reach. And then the trick, the balance, is to do that in a way where your phone doesn't use you and it distracts you from doing that other thing. There's going to be one of you ever come down the pike ever. And so what I hope is that you figure out what is it that is unique to you, what is your art, what is your voice, and who cares about that and use the technology to find that, because now you can find an audience anywhere on the planet. And actually, that, that will literally be true in a few years when the companies that are trying to envelop the entire planet with high-speed Wi-Fi all come on. There's a, there's a few billion people gonna be coming onto the internet over the next five years, and they will come on with high-speed wireless. And so why not have your voice be one of the voices that they look to? So I hope you're interested in being a part of it. Um, Gino, are you in the room? Yeah, okay. So Gino, the, they're going to find out what to do, how. Are you going to email them? Just got an email. You just got an email. So if you want to be a part of it, that all of the information that you need is in there. How about a round of applause for Gino? Yeah. Just because. of an advanced age, so it's just any time that I'm uh, uh, on stage, he's on hand, right. just to make sure. Does anybody have a quick question before we're, we're closing things out? You'll, you've got that email, there's lots of ways to get involved, you can submit a video, you can create a video, you can hit us up to be a part of the crew, uh, be a part of the social media team, be a part of it any way you want to be. Actually, I left out one of the ways. There's a teacher companion guide that comes out uh, with every episode, so that if a uh, high school choir teacher uh, needs to um, uh, take a personal day or they're sick, they can have their sub play an episode and then there's a teacher guide that goes with it that, that has information on how to integrate it into their uh, program. So we're hoping to reach, that's the other big thing you can do to help, is to spread the word. Um, you can find it on Facebook at the Modern Musicking Center and, uh, or it's on YouTube and so share it with your 
high school um, music program, any music teacher that you think would find it interesting, share it with them, share it with your colleagues, share it with your friends, and if you want to be a part of it, we want you to be a part of it. Thank you for your time. Thank you to the crew. Thank you very much for making it happen. Thank you Hey, thanks for watching the show. If you want to reach us with questions or comments, you can figure out all the ways to do that by clicking on any of those links in wherever you're watching this thing. We've had a great time putting these together and hope you find them useful as well. Thanks for watching.